platinum subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, welcome to the show today, and we have a special guest, I believe, is on the line, Peter Lydes from Stock Market Cycles. Are you there, my friend? Uh, hopefully, he's going to be there. We're going to see if we can connect with Peter. Uh, 1230. You mean at the half hour? Is that when he's going to... I'm a little confused here, Al. Tell me what uh, what's going on. Um, well, I don't know what to do. Then I just have to move on to something else. Okay. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the markets. Those of you that like the 382, uh, you might be interested in knowing that the high today was supposed to be 4008 in the S&P before it broke 50 handles. The high was 4010, missed it by 100 bucks. The high in the gold was supposed to be 1738. It went to 1740 before dropping $2,000, almost $3,000. That was off $300. And the wheat was 851. The high was 855, off $200. And it has dropped $1,300. So the 382 was right on the spot today. And hopefully we'll have some of these types of trades when we do our live trading session on the 20th of September. Okay, folks, I want to get up here and try to share with you a couple of charts that I that I think are very, very important. Just get this one up here where we are right now. This is the dollar index. I want to get this up here because the euro is jumping all over the map like it should be whenever the Federal Reserve is talking. And we'll get this up here to show you where we are because we were expecting the, the low in this uh, – the uh, dollar index to hold down here at the 78% level, and it did. And it went right up to the 61% retracement, right up in here, and then it stopped. So this this euro is – well, this is the dollar index. So the dollar index is between 110.79 and down here at the 78% level at uh, 110 – it uh, looks like one, no, 109.26. So that'll be the trading range in, inside that band. You can see the three drive to a top pattern, a little bit of a back off at the 3A2, and then another three drive to a top pattern going, taking out all the highs for the last two days. That's all it did right up here. Got to 110.79. Remember that the 1.618 number was 110.59. So we hit that, and then we backed off quite a bit. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the euro as we go through here and look at some of these things because it's had some tremendous moves and that's what we're trying to capture here you know on some of these and that's the name of the game now i wanted to share with you a really great chart that looked absolutely perfect yesterday and this was from our friend alan swan alan smith over in the uk and this was about the footsie now bringing this to your attention for two reasons. One, the importance of the th the 135 pattern. There is a perfect 135 pattern, folks, as you can see. And the market opens sharply lower. And then look what happens. It goes back above it. Once it breaks that number, the loss on this trade was less than $200. At one time, it had about $600 in it, but uh, it ended up with a loss of $200. But when it breaks, when it breaks that, that tells you that this 135 pattern is no longer valid, and you've got to stand aside. There's nothing else you can do. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. And the main thing is you've got to learn to think in probabilities. We had Paula Douglas on yesterday, uh, Mark's uh, uh, widow, and I wanted to remember this quote from Mark. It says, when you really believe that trading is simply a probability game, concepts like right or wrong no longer have any meaning to you and boy when you can get to that point boys and girls you you're you're in the you're in a good spot because you don't really care it's just a matter of letting the ducks come up 
and letting him come in and feed him, folks. So that's the main thing. I hope you can see the quote that I sent up. I want to share a couple other charts in here. Hope we'll have Peter coming up at the uh, break. The other one here is the Treasury bonds, folks. I want to get this to you. We talked about possibility of a little bit of a bounce here at the 78% level, and that is, in fact, what we've had happen. And um, you know what? I don't know why there's a clicking in my uh, on my microphone, but I'm going to fix it at the break for sure. This is the T-bonds, folks. You'll notice here we've got the big ABCD measures down here. We should, we've taken out these lows from several years ago. And so we're, what we're looking at now is to see whether these are going to hold. That is, in fact, the key thing that we're looking at. Now, we got down to 32, and all we were doing there was matching the last month low, and we've rallied $2,000, folks. And, of course, we've given 1000 of that back today. Hopefully, when we see these things move, that we'll have some really good action, which we're having action in the, in the Dow Jones today, folks. We were down 300, okay, and then we were up. Uh, 400 and then down 300 so we've only had a uh, 1100 point swing in the Dow Jones and we are just la just past uh, 115 in the afternoon there in New York so we're having some wild action in all of these things so remind ourselves that <laughs> you get ready and make sure you put a stop in if you're doing some things because if you don't and if you don't they're going to send you to you know where the promised land and that's not the land you want to be in you want to be in the land of, you know, milk and honey, and that's what we tried to get along here. I've asked, to, I've been asked to discuss this chart that we got about the worst August, July, January to August period that we've ever seen. I'll bring it up to you and show you it. It's been posted on the internet a half a dozen times by people talking about it, but I just wanted to show you what it means. What this means is, since 1976 to 2020, okay, that's 30. What, 46 years? 46 years, okay, you are looking at a market that has the worst period during that time. You see, by far, it's the worst period ever in the history of the stock market, folks, because I went back and looked even farther. I, I, I didn't check every year, but I checked most years. But this is such an outlier event that it really means something. Something triggered in January. I don't know what it was, but something triggered. Now, remember, we were looking for a big top up there. On January 4th, there was a lot of, you know, things that we look at that were up there to tell us that. Then we've had the big break, and then we had this nice little rally from June 2016th uh, to where we are now, and up to the, well, excuse me, to August 25th, and we had the break and then the rally. But uh, you, you have to look at the numbers today, folks. They, they, numbers don't lie. They really don't. They might not mean anything today, but my goodness, this is, you have to do the work yourself here if you like if you like FIB numbers. And the reason why I want you to do that, because they are, so, well, I'm going to do it for you. Shucks, why not? This, this is the, this, I'll do the NASDAQ. I don't usually do the NASDAQ, but someone asked me to take a look at it. It was the only one, well, the, the Dow Jones didn't hit it either, but the S&P has made an exact 382 retracement of the high we made back here on August 25th. This was, you see this little red box in here? That was a three day correction. This is a three-day correction. It closed at 408. If it closes above 408, it's going to go a whole lot higher. Could even make new highs. But we hit 408, and we broke 50 handles. So far, we've rallied back 50% uh, of that, and now we're going to find out whether it holds up. But if we close below this low right here, this market right here. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Peter Lighties of Stock Market Cycles on the line now. Peter, are you there? I can hear you if you can hear me. You are coming in loud and clear, my friend. We're not having much action in the Dow Jones today, folks. 300 up, 400, uh, 300 down, 400 up, and 300 down. That's only 1,000 points, and we're about halfway through the trading day. <laughs> Peter, what are you looking at here, my friend? Well, it's, things are getting very interesting. Larry. We're looking at... Uh, we're looking at a market that, for several reasons, I think, uh, is ready to move very dramatically to the downside. Uh, there's a level on the S&P. Um, I, I don't know if you have any of the charts that I sent you in, in the yes. past couple of hours, but can you show them on? Yes. Okay. We're showing so, you. We're looking at chart number one. Okay. Chart number one is a projection chart. This is used my software now that I do my daily updates based on and that green area in chart number one is a intraday projection for the S&P cash we just got into the window at the high this morning so th there's still room to go higher but as long as you enter that window then you have satisfied the projection and if we go to the next chart chart number two um, You'll notice that what you, what you have to do to generate a projection is to get above the gray area. Well, notice that we are below the gray area. That would be the next longer cycle. So as, as long as we don't get through and above this area right here, then the first chart I showed you should be a control in terms of how far the S&P is going to go, mm -hmm. which means in effect that we could very well be at a top now, although there's slightly more potential. Uh, chart number three is is really interesting. Is that one available and viewable? Yes, Larry? it sure is. I have it right here. Mm -hmm. this, uh, just one second, we'll get it up here and be able to take a quick look at it. And uh, there's where we go here. Okay, my friend. Okay, so this is an hourly chart. I call it hourly. It's actually 65 minutes, but that breaks equally uh, six periods into a market day. Uh, and this is the S&P cash. Now, it's we're really at an interesting juncture here. This is up to date as of uh, maybe an hour or two ago. Notice that there are three 
important moving averages. For me, probably the best short-term moving average that I have ever seen in terms of delineating short-term trend, and I emphasize the term short-term, is the exponential 10-day moving average. I think if you look at that on the chart, you can see very clearly that that's a great delineator of market short-term trend. You get above it and you're in a short-term uptrend. You get below it and you're in a short-term downtrend. Well, we've been below it now for several days and we're testing it on the upside. So um, I don't know what that exact level is there, but it looks like it's right around the, oh, I'd say the 40, 40 level or so on the S&P. Mm -hmm. The other the other two moving averages, the, the green one is a 50-day, which a lot of people look at. I like the 100-day MA, and this is a simple 100-day now, not not uh, exponential or weighted. And mm -hmm. that, again, is another really good long-term trend indicator. We, we broke above it temporarily for a few weeks coming into August, but now we've gotten back above it, back below it again. And generally, as a general rule, if you break below a declining 100-day MA, that can be a pretty bearish configuration. We've done that, and then we've rallied back up to it again. Uh, I think the important thing to note is that all three of these MAs are right around the same level, and we've rallied right back up to that level in terms of the three MAs. Um, the last chart, I don't know, do I have a last chart that I uh, the last, that was Those were the three that, uh, yeah, that I okay. saw that you had, okay. so that no, was really no, good. You, I have a question from one of our sure. listeners. We had uh, Stan Harley on a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about uh, Lucas numbers. And we, your name came up, and because I asked him, does Peter use Lucas numbers? And I, I didn't think so. But have you? I know what I know. You know what they are, Peter. But do you use those at all? Because I found oh, I Fibonacci don't. to be as good as anything I can find. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm a Fibonacci man, and and uh, you know what else I use? In fact, sometime in the and in the next time or two that we talk, Larry, I'll show them online because they're really fantastic tools uh, invented by Edson Gould, whom I consider to be probably in the top two or three of market masters of the last uh, century. Anyway, Edson Gould invented speed resistance lines. Some people use Fibonacci numbers on them. Uh, I like to use simple one-third and two-third speed resistance lines and uh, I don't have any available to show you now but next time we talk I'll show you some speed resistance lines and people can see how well they work because they're really super little indicators but no I do not use Lucas numbers okay we have another question for one of our listeners and that is that when you usually show us charts you don't show anything like Keltner bands or Bollinger bands have you used those in the past, or do you find them useful? That was the question. The answer is Kelter bands, no. I have, I have not used them. Bollinger bands, yes. I find Bollinger bands useful. And speaking of Bollinger bands, uh, you know, I became pretty friendly with Bollinger when I used to make appearances on I FNN remember. And I remember. Yes, I see. Yep. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know what became of him. Does, do you know if John Bollinger is yes. still active? And, yeah, he's still you know, active. He does stuff with uh, all uh, stock charts, and he also is occasionally a guest on Bloomberg. But I think he's okay. pretty much retired, from yeah. what I understood. Yeah. But he's healthy and, and well. I mean, he's uh, above right. ground and looking on the green side of the grass, so that's a good thing. Give it, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, no, I do, I do, you know, I find Bollinger Bands useful uh, because they, they're pretty good in terms of boundaries when you look at either an indicator, an individual stock or, or a stock market index. Um, they tend to be good. You just have to know how to use them. You know, there are some sure. people that get overly simplistic and say, oh, we're at the top of the Bollinger Band, we better sell, or the reverse to the bottom, we better buy. They're at the mm -hmm. bottom of the Bollinger Band. Uh, one of the interesting things about Bollinger Bands is they sometimes give their best indication when when markets break out of them to the upside or the downside. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, if you take a look at market crashes, uh, you break below that Bollinger Band, and the lower Bollinger Band 
instead of becoming support becomes resistance if you're in a mm -hmm. crash like situation so yeah I, I enjoy them I find them useful um, and and uh, yes the answer is I do use them uh, the second question we've got a break coming up here pretty soon but maybe we can talk about it before what's your downside projection on the S&P uh, Peter okay I have some active downside projections on the S&P and because I don't have them in front of me right now, although they are on that, one of them is on that first chart. We'll talk when we come back. Yes, we'll put that chart back up and we'll discuss that. Peter Lighty, Stock Market Cycles, folks. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're speaking with Peter Leidy, the stock market cycles. And the question was, what was your downside projection for the S&P uh, 500 and during this move down, Peter? Okay. I have outstanding now, and it's been confirmed, a nominal 10-week projection, I call it, because I go by the lengths of the cycles, calling for, this is on an intraday basis on the S&P cash, 35.4860 to 36.7315. That's a confirmed downside projection. The beautiful thing about uh, the software that's now been written for me, Larry, by Stefan Scheuermann, the fine young German gentleman um, who now lives in Dubai is that you can not only, you not only get the projections but depending on what period of time you're using it'll tell you what percentage of previous projections that were generated have been reached 
And this is a pretty good percentage one. The, the, the downside projections with this particular nominal 10-week projection have been reached over the past four years have been reached 77% of the time. Wow, so that's I would, great. I would, I would submit that uh, in terms of uh, market analysis, 77% is pretty darn good. So, oh, that's anyway, for sure. Those, those are the downsides. Let me give you some very short-term upsides, though, because those are interesting, too. The upside projection for the, well, I opened my mouth too soon because it's not sure. See if I have one to give you for the end. Those are the two basic ones that I look at are NDX and the S&P. Although, you know what in index I find interesting is uh, the Wilshire 5000. Uh, I used to use the New York composite because it contains all the stocks in the New York exchange. Unfortunately, I don't know the reason for it, but TradeStation, who is my data purveyor and the software I use, no longer carries the New York composite index. Um, hold on a second. I'll give you that short term because I can't. I'm not going to get it from the dailies, but I believe mm -hmm. it's here on the hourly charts, and I can give your listeners what this will be. And it calls for here it is on the S and P an upside projection to between four thousand nine eighty two to four thousand fifty forty two. Okay. And the high to high today has been. 4,050, so it snuck right into that projection window. So for practical purposes, that projection has been satisfied, although there is still potentially higher numbers outstanding. So, Very interesting. Well, listen, I know you're really busy today, but we'll have you on again in a few weeks because uh, we have requests for you all the time. Uh, because your work is great. You know, Peter, we were talking about the FNN in the old days. That was really fun to go down there to be on TV and sit there with Ed Hart and, you know, Bill Griffith and Sue Herrera. Those those were really fun days, you know. It mm -hmm. seems like it was yesterday, but it was 40-some years ago. <laughs> uh, it was incredible. But yeah. do you remember Ed Hart's expression? I've always loved his expression. Oh, he was the he, best. When we talked about the market, Ed Hart said, we will know in the fullness of time. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, he was one of the best writers for the L.A. Times, too. He yeah. was really great. And uh, he lived a good life. He lived a long time. He's a nice guy for sure. Absolutely. But listen, my friend, you take it easy and be safe and stay on the green side of the grass, okay? Always enjoy talking to you, Larry. Thanks. You bet, Peter. You certainly are. We'll have you on again in a few weeks. Peter Laddies, folks, Stock Market Cycles. Just Google it, and you can get all the information you need. Thanks again, Peter. Sure. You bet. Okay, folks, we'll get back and talking about some of these markets. Uh, one of them that absolutely failed the 382 today. Well, not not actually because the crude oil hit the first fib, uh, the 382 retracement at 80, uh, 83, uh, 8372, had a high of 8395, then broke all the way down to 8202. And then it's rallied two dollars a barrel to go above eighty four forty. When that happens, that is a you know confirmed break of a three eighty two. It made some good money on the downside if you'd have covered. If you didn't, you'd have been break even. That's the main thing that how you want. I'll be covering that during the uh, trading session during the uh, live trading. I hope it's a day like today for heaven's sakes. That would really be uh, really be nice. But you know, most of the days we see a lot of these things unfolding, which is uh, really quite nice as we watch them go. You know, up and down, up and down, up and down. I wanted to bring this last chart up that we were talking about before we had Peter come up. This is the NASDAQ. Now, I, I did the S&P, but I also did the NASDAQ. But I want you to see the one on the S&P here on the NASDAQ first. It's exactly like the one uh, on the uh, S&P. They, they, there is no difference. And as you can see here, uh, during this time frame, you see the market rallied to a 50% retracement in the first box up here. Then it broke all the way down here. Remember, there's your 61% retracement. And this box here shows you that the time frame in this box is equal to this box. It's a three-day rally. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Here we are. And what do we hit? We missed the 382 on this one on the first. We might make it on the second. We missed it by about 40 handles on the NASDAQ, but the S&P hit it exactly at 4010. And as you heard, 
Peter 4010 was one of his price projections based on the things that he looks at, which is, you know, related to some of this, but it's very, very close. That's why when you're trading, folks, you're trading against algorithmic traders, so they know these numbers. You know, they're, they've got mathematicians with degrees that, you know, have nine letters behind them. And, you know, we don't, which those of us that have been in the third grade more than three years know that we don't have that. So what do we have to do? We have to use simple things like A, B equals C, D, 382-618-786-127, and 1.618. And that's what we use. And it serves us pretty well. Does it serve us well every day? Nope. But it serves us well most of the time. Now, I've been asked to talk again about this chart that I got from Stansbury Research. It was done uh, quite a while ago, but I want to show it to you because it has all the things that we believe in. And I'll, I think this is something that you have to really pay really close attention because if it's right, they're looking at something pretty ominous. And since we started this January period as one of the worst ever, uh, we ought to pay attention. Here was a crash of 1987, okay? There was the rally, okay, up into the um, 2000, 1999. There was the, the first crash, which was the uh, dot-com bubble. That dropped a, a great deal. And then you had this one here, dropped a great deal. This was the 09, the real estate thing. And then we completed the ABCD pattern up here. What's interesting, you see, each of these big swings up was 12 years, five months, and 12 years, nine months. Well, if you're four months off, over a period of 40 years, that's pretty much spot on. And as you can see, the market topped on January, and we've been down ever since. Nothing dramatic as of yet, but we have been down. So that's why it's very, very important. And the other reason is they're looking for a price objective of 10,000 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the next three, uh, two years into 2024. They're expecting us uh, the bottom to come in to what we're looking at now i mean that's a really long projection but you know when you're looking at that chart folks you're looking at a b equals c d and that is about as clear as you can possibly be on, on an a b c d pattern okay now i wanted to talk just a tiny bit about apple because apple's had you know really good news come out yesterday and it was up and then it was down i don't know where it is now because these markets are all over the map the dow jones dropped 300 then it rallied 500. That's thir that's 800 points. And then it came down 300. Okay, so that's 1,100 point swing in the Dow today. Uh, and, we're, and we're still up on the day. I mean, you know, we might have to end up being six or 700 higher. I don't know. All I know is that when this little cycle is over, oh, I've got to say, I've got to get a plug, folks, for Norm Winsky. If you remember, we had Norm on on Monday, and he said, look for a bottoming to come in on Tuesday because of the perihelion. Uh, being to Venus, in other words, as close to Venus as it gets, and he expected a rally for a few days, usually into the 12th, which would bring us into Monday morning. So he's looking for a possibility of a rally into you Monday morning. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I was just informed by my friend John Jameson over in the Isle of Man that Queen Elizabeth has passed away, led a wonderful life for 96 years. I have to tell you a story about Queen Elizabeth. We were vacationing in Hawaii, and it was early in the morning, and we were at the, I believe we were staying at the Ala Moana Hotel at the time, and uh, there were a lot of people in the lobby, and I couldn't find my daughter. She was, I think, nine years old, and I kept... You know, Jilly, where are you? Where are you? And I heard her scream. She's, Dad, I'm over here by the elevator. And, you know, so I went over there. And there's all kinds of reporters and stuff. And uh, by golly, it was the Queen of England. And she was walking by. And she stopped and patted Jill on the head and uh, said hello to her and shook her hand. And Jill came over and she says, who was that old lady that shook my hand? And I said, that was the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, it was uh, it was really uh, rather startling, but uh, never got to shake her hand either. But that was uh, that was really nice that she got to meet the queen. And the new king will be King Charles. And we found out this morning that his wife uh, Camilla will also be named the queen, the Duchess of uh, wherever it's going. Where the queen of she's going to be the queen of England with a Duchess of whatever it is. But uh, Queen Elizabeth asked that uh, Charles. Uh, crown his wife as the Queen of England. So I imagine that's going to be a lot of politics over there during that time. So we'll see. Call probably call, cause all the markets to rally because all the people will be doing all the stuff with the uh, celebrating and everything. So that's what we're paying attention to here today. Anyway, it's been a fun day, and we're going to got we've got some more things to talk about. Mainly is the bond market, folks. Uh, that's where the real problem lies. We've had a little bit of a bounce. Uh, the, we'd rally two handles, then we've come back a handle and a half. So now, now we got to find out, you know, what uh, what is going on uh, after this. So that's that's how we see it. Okay, if anybody has any questions, it's eight seven seven nine seven seven two six four eight, and I'll be happy to uh, but uh, to look at it. But as of now, someone just asked. Yes, it's it's. King Charles is the king as of right now. She was 96 years old, and um, her, 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 her birthday is in May. I remember that because I've been in London so many times. I was there once during her birthday time, and you, you couldn't get around anywhere near Buckingham Palace, which you know is really hard to move around and to see uh, Westminster Abbey and all that stuff is just really fun. England's a very old place, you know, folks. started in 1066, the Battle of Hastings. Okay, let's move on here, and we'll take a look at the – I don't know what's happening to the DAX during that time, but give me one second here to catch up to see how much we're, we're right near the highs of the day in the Dow Jones. We're 10 points away in the uh, S&P, it seems. Uh, gold has had a little bit of a tiny bit of rally after dropping $30. Uh, well, $28, and then the rest of them. The bonds are holding up relatively well. They're only down a little more than a point from the high, but that's the main thing. The one we have to look at, folks, is the dollar index. We've been talking about that for several days, and we need to pay very close attention to it. I know I did a chart here 
to get ready for the show today, and I wanted to find it. Please help me find it. Please help me find it. Maybe this is it. Yep, here it is, right here. Here's where I pushed. I put. I, I, sorry, I put it out earlier, but I want. This is not the updated version, but I wanted to share this with you because it's got something that I wanted to point out. Because what we've done here, since we've backed off to this level, we've already completed the 61% retracement. We might even have gone above the 78% level. That's important because of the euro and one other thing, especially now. With the new, that means remember that's a figurehead over there. They, you know, they don't have any uh, make any laws or anything like that. But you know, they're consulted on that like, stuff for the uh, the what do they call it, the monarchy or whatever it is. So that's important. But the main thing is is the U.S. dollar. Let me show you. Since we're talking about the Queen, let's take a second here and take a look at the. This could be a big rally, folks. So we got to. Why I don't know because it looks like a dog. But you know, we've come very close to the the price objective, with within ten pips, and we rallied all the way up to one sixteen. Now I don't know where the pound is. We said to sell it at one sixteen, and it dropped over a thousand dollars. I know that because that we finished that trade. I don't know where it is now, but watch this level here see if see if this uh, pound gets down to this just below 114 we got to 11406 we were looking for 11385 so that's very very close and now with the, is, can someone tell me is the pound reacting a lot uh, to what's going on here someone let me know uh, if the pound is jumping quite a bit I'd like to see uh, to see it's uh, one, oh, watch one. Thank you, Duffy. One fifteen thirty. That's doing pretty good. So we'll have to be able to keep a close eye on that because maybe the dollar is turning, folks. Remember, we posted here yesterday that the seven eight six on the long term weekly dollar index was at one ten fifty eight, and we got to one ten seventy nine, and you know for playing. Um, that's pretty close. <laughs> it's very, very close. So remind ourselves that this might be something really big, and that's why we got to remember it. I'm going to bring it up here to show you on the long-term weekly. Or this is a weekly index, but let's take a quick look at it. You'll see that it hit that exact number, which was the 786, right up there on the long-term weekly. That was it. Now, the, the weekly I have here doesn't go back far enough. But it's the monthly chart. It's the monthly 786 because it goes back to 20, um, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2000. <laughs> that's where uh, I remember that because that's when my grandson was born in 2000. And anyway, uh, that's where we are. That was the 78% level on this. So there's a chance if the dollar is going to turn here, you know what's going to get strong, don't you, boys and girls? And that is the gold. That is the gold. So it's going to be really, uh, really uh, quite unbelievable if that's uh, if that is in fact going to be the case. So we'll watch it. Remember uh, what Mark, uh, what Norman talked about on the other day was the Venus being perihelion, means as close to the moon that it gets, and then we'll or is it to the Earth? Yeah, one of the two. I can't remember. But anyway, he said it was a very important thing. He was looking for a rally in stocks, and boy, we've certainly got it up and down today folks it's had both of them together so it's going to be interesting to see how everything uh, ends up but it's it's pretty pretty strong we're holding up really strong from what i understand and the euro's back to par again which has been under par for quite a while i've got my beeper on that every time it goes above par it lets me know when it goes below par i want to know where it is and that's why we're paying really close attention to uh to this uh, right here so that's the main things that we're watching here this morning and the uh, crude oil is back below 84 again. Uh, someone asked my long-term projection in the uh, crude oil. I don't have a very long-term projection, but just on the, the, the dailies, it says we could easily reach 78 in that, uh, in that time frame. So that's a main thing of what we're watching for is to wa watch that one. That's going to be a real interesting one to uh, pay very, very close attention to. I think we have a break coming up here pretty soon. I sure enjoyed uh, Mr. Peter Lydes joining us today on next week. I will not be here tomorrow, Friday, folks. There I have a doctor's appointment, annual physical, and I will be back 877-927-6648.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and what I want to do now is to show you the uh, these computers. I'll tell you that. They drive me nuts. Anyway, you'll notice here, this is a three-day rally, just like we did in the NASDAQ, with the exact number, folks. That number was at 40.09, it got to 40.10. Well, it's off by a little. Anyway, and that's what we're looking. We get above that, we're probably going to go up to the 50% or 61. But the fact that we're in this three-day window, and with these things that we're looking at with that Mercury retrograde and all the other stuff, I think this is my own personal opinion. I know very little about astrology, but if Mercury was ever active or inactive, uh, you can see why the market can go up 300, down 400, up 300. You make an 1,100-point swing in a day and still be unchanged on the day. I mean, that's just unbelievable. But if this is only a three-day rally and we close lower, uh-oh, and if we get below this level right here that we made uh, yesterday, that is going to be a very, very, very bad sign. And look out, because then you'll be heading down a great deal lower. Anything below that 3880 would really, uh, you know, really, we moved 50 handles down and 50 handles up. So we moved 100 handles in the S&P today, folks. So that's not easy. That's why you've got to use a stop in here, I guess, unless you're trading super long term and you're willing to set with some, you know, some uh, what we call excitement, <laughs> which, you know, we don't like excitement. That's for sure. Remember, these patterns are predictive in nature. They don't give you the future. They're predictive in nature. That means they're not right all the time. 
And they're right about 65, 70% of the time, but that other part of the time is what you got to worry about. Focus on your losses. Don't worry about your profits, and you're going to be fine. If you do that, you should be okay. Sometimes I have a hard term learning that lesson myself, but so far it's been holding me relatively good. We've had four really big ones today. Uh, based on the 382, all of them worked pretty nicely. And so, and I appreciate the emails I got, folks, from you folks about the 382. And believe me, we're going to be going over that like a fine tooth comb on September 20th, which will be my last trading day of the year. And uh, it'll be our fourth one. And we've had three really successful ones. And I'm very confident that we're going to be okay on that day, too. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. 